are here for another tips and tricks video. Uh, we're going to continue our series on tupperizing. We're going to continue working with the same tool we talked about in the last episode, which is the square square tool used to create that infamous square inside of a square using a tool rather than paper foundation piecing or rounded numbers or the infamous folded corner where you're throwing a lot of um, fabric into your trash can. And today what I'd like to do is share with you a couple of things. One, a question that we're asked all the time. The difference between the original Square Square that we uh, released about 12 plus or minus years ago and an updated version. I'll share with you the differences and share with you how you can uh, adapt and change your original to the updated version. We're going to talk about some tips and tricks that I always give to students, some troubleshooting uh, tips uh, when I'm in a classroom and a square squared unit is involved. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about fussy cutting, which is what you see in those two smaller uh, wall hangs that are hanging behind me. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, remember, that when you're tuckerizing, there are a couple things you need to do. You should be able to recognize the unit, uh, figure out what tool is involved to create that unit in the Studio 180 lineup, and analyze what size you need to make, and then make those changes to their processes and to the numbers so that you're going to end up with perfect units and better efficiency all along the way. And so let's take a look. Remember, one of the things that we talked about was the fact that the center square is a pretty weird size if you're trying to cut a square and surround it by four triangles. And the fact that most um, charts, even reference charts, will give you numbers 5.66. They're telling me that's five and three quarters. Well, that's off uh, too much. To, in order to be able to make the unit accurately. That's one of the reasons that we struggle with this so much. And we have dealt with that odd size square in the center by creating a tool that has window templates. So let's take a look here at the um, original tool, which is what you see here, and our upgraded tool. What's the same? Well, the trim down sections are the same in both. Those haven't changed at all. The icon is the same, except the new one has black triangles around the outside, the chart that gives you the size squares to cut to create those oversized triangles stays the same, and the window templates themselves remain the same. What we added just a couple years ago, three or four years ago, were some additional guidelines that helped me do some of these things like fussy cut or go on and do um, more intricate designs was we added a guideline first that went right through the center. I found myself drawing it on mine, and you can do that too. Um, the other thing that we added were strip sizes that we like to cut for the different size window templates that would be slightly oversized and then allow me to use the window template quickly and easily in a strip piece format or in strip cut format. Um, and those numbers, are, you can see by visiting our website, going to my large square squared image, and you can see all those first six sizes of the strips that um, we recommend for, for that. And the other thing we added were these registration marks at the halfway point of a six inch to five inch. And those registration marks are north and south, east and west. And those are what we needed in order to be able to go on and do some of the more intricate designs later on. Now, let's show, uh, let me share with you just briefly how you can make the old tool just like the updated tool. And what I would do, first of all, turn the tools over so you're working on the wrong side. Drawing a line through there is quick, it's easy. All you need is a straight edge. And the tool that I like to draw with is this Sharpie pen. It's an ultra fine, it's a retractable, but it's gonna make a permanent line. And I would just draw that line right down through there quickly and easily. When it comes to these registration marks, remember those are the window templates for the center square. And those are pretty odd maths. You don't want to try and measure it and compute it mathematically. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Take a simple sheet of paper and we're going to work with the six inch size because it's a li little easier to see here. Line up a piece of paper right with the edge of the tool. Let's get that lined up correctly. And then come over and make a mark at there, at the edge of the, the cutting line. 
Take that piece of paper, fold it in half so that the edge of the paper matches with the mark, give it a little press. That halfway mark is the registration mark that we added to this tool. And I like to add it so it's going right over top of the sewing line, not, not necessarily the cutting line. And to, to continue on with all four of those sides, I just do the same thing. Line up the edge of the paper, line up the mark here. And what happens on this side is that it lines up exactly with one of the lines that's already there. That doesn't happen for anything other than the six, but when we do that, we will have those halfway registration marks on all four sides that we're gonna need next episode when we learn how to do more advanced units with our square squared tool. And as far as the numbers go for the sides, size of the strips, you can either go to the website and check that out on our large square squared image, or what you can do is you can simply measure that and see that it's a little bit less than two and three quarters and cut your strips wider and then trim it down. And I'm gonna show you how to do that next. But hopefully that will help you take those older tools and bring them up to the newer tools. But you know, if you've had that tool a while, maybe you simply want to invest in a new square squared or add the large square squared to your lineup. All right, so let's take a look next at some of the hints and some of the tips that I give to students all the time when the square squared tool is in a project that I'm teaching in a classroom. Now let me get this centered best I can and we'll give it a little bit of a refocus. Okay, um, first of all, what size strips do I need to cut? Well, all that information is now on the tool itself. If I'm making a three inch finished unit, what I would do is look at the tool and for the three inch finished block that I wanna end up with, it will tell me to cut my strips two and three quarter inches. All right, now that strip is gonna be, again, a little too wide. So when I go to put the window template on there, I'm gonna be able to line it up with two cleaned up edges, make a cut this way, but I'm also gonna to need to make a cut across the top. That's going to give me a precision square just slightly smaller than the two and three quarters. And one of the things that I always try to do, and this is a mantra I've lived with for all my years of piecing quilts, cut one thread heavy and stitch one thread shot. It's, th it's that process that has helped me to get more precision piecework. And so what that means is when I'm looking at the lines of the tool, I would make sure that those lines and maybe one thread beyond are on that unit so that when I cut that square, it's just a little bit heavier, a little bit wider than it needs to be, allowing for the thread and the fold and with the pressing that creates a little bit of inaccuracy. All right, so that's how we cut the center for those side squares. Again, the tool has the information. If I'm making a three inch finished unit, it tells me to cut two and three quarter inch squares. Well, I would start with two and three quarter inch strips and then proceed to cut it into squares. And what I would do here is I would always pull out my tucker trimmer too, because it has quarter and three quarter inch increments. So I can quickly line those up there and chop, chop, chop those two and three quarter inch squares, cut them in half to create the surrounding triangles that go around the outside. All right, here are pretty much must do's in order to get success with this. First of all, stitch with the square on the top. It is the precision piece and you wanna keep your best eye and have your best quarter of an inch on that center square. I would add two triangles to that square and then I would stop and I'm gonna double check. What I'm gonna do is look at my future trim down lines on what I've already sewn. So since I'm making a three inch unit, what I'm gonna look at on the tool, at the trim down lines, are the connections between the, the X's that'll be the three. So there's a line there, there's a line here, line here, line here, between those threes. I'm gonna look at this line and this line between the three, position them over top of the unit that I just pieced, and if those lines line up Yahoo, I'm ready to keep on going. I've got my seam allowance refined to the point that it's gonna give me a good end result. If 
on the other hand, and I'm going to move this up just a little bit so we can see it better. I put the three inch guideline exactly on the bottom. And I look up here at the top, oh no, that's not lining up. Well, I did something wrong. What's wrong? Well, I could, I better double check my center square and I would, I can turn that over and lay this on top to make sure that it's cut precisely. But more often than not, what happens is those seams are too wide. I've stitched seams that are too heavy. Um, I would take them out and try to skinny up those seams a thread or two to get it a little bit closer. But there's a couple of other things that may be the cause of the guidelines not lining up. If you are one who likes to press from the back with the seam going in that direction, frequently what happens is you end up pressing a little pleat in your piece. And that will ca also cause those lines not to line up, is that, that pleat that's in there. And if you make the mistake of stitching with the triangle on top, yep, I've got a pretty good seam on there, but what has happened is on the back, the, sh the square has shifted away from the edge of the triangle. And so it's right on down here, but it's off up there. That's going to cause those lines not to line up. So taking a look, doing some warm-up pieces uh, before you start digging in maybe to your, your very best expensive fabric will help you get better um, alignment and make better units and give you a good trim down when you're done. But one other thing that I've come to do more and more frequently is to take my units and press all the seams open. It helps to distribute that bulk around those seam intersections. And especially when I'm doing something with Storm at Sea, it gives me a much uh, less bulky intersection when those pieces end up going together. So those are classroom hints. One other thing that I'd like to talk about today is how you would use the tool to be able to fussy cut a shape. You know, if you were trying to do this with paper foundation piecing, you'd really have to struggle quite a bit to get it. I'm glad I have a tool that does that. Um, first of all, I'm going to work from the wrong side on there so that I can put marks on this and show you what I'm doing. But I, what I need to try to do is find the halfway mark of the images. And it's a pretty close guess. What I would do is fold those two edges so that they kind of match, give it a press, fold the other direction so that they kind of match on there to there, give it a press, and go ahead with a friction pen that's gonna come out um, with heat, mark that center. And then when I go to line up my tool on there, this is gonna be, it fit best inside the center square for a four inch unit. I would take my square squared tool, flip it over onto the wrong side and with my Invisigrip on there, go ahead and mark a second diagonal across there. I would do that with a permanent pen so it's not gonna rub off on my fabric. And um, that will allow me, that kind of X will allow me to come back and line up one here and line up one here, give me the, giving me the image centered, trim it down so that it's the way I like it and the way I want it to be in my finished unit. Now these are, again, you just, once you trim that, that's your center square, you just add those oversized triangles and then come back and trim it all down when, you, when you're finished. And you know, if that line that's on the back is not something you wanna have on there permanently, just use some hand sanitizer or some rubbing alcohol and you can take those permanent lines right off the back of your tools. So hopefully that will give you some things to think about when you're making your square squares uh, and you know some things to practice before we come back to the next episode because in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to learn and talk about uh, a technique sheet that we have associated with the square square tool and it's called stack squares and it's going to take you from making a simple square square into making what we call an economy block that's a square inside of a square inside of a square and you can do it little or you can do it big but you're going to want to have this technique sheet to go along with it and then we're also going to try to address taking a small economy block and putting it inside of a larger economy block so that you can end up making stacked squares with your tool and give you a whole lot more different kind of 
units that you can add to your bag of tricks. So until then, take care, practice some of those troubleshooting uh, things with your square square tool, add those lines if you need to, if you have the original one, pick up the square square tool at your local quilt shop or give us a shout, we'll get it in the mail ASAP. But till then, take care and uh, happy 4th of July, everybody. Bye all.